السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وعلى الصفوة من أصحابه الأخيار المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا صدق الله العلي العظيم Congratulations to all fathers and grandfathers on this day, the day where we celebrate fatherhood, Father's Day. And fatherhood is a blessing and a gift. It's a gift from God. It's a blessing. It's a privilege to be a father. At the same time, it's an important responsibility too. It's a commitment. And sometimes God bestows this gift and this responsibility on some. And sometimes God does not give it to others. And this is what he says in Surah Ashura, chapter 42. God says, if I give children to someone, to a family, to a father, to a mother, then there is a reason. There is wisdom in that. There is hikmah. If I decide not to give, also there is a reason. Also there is wisdom. So you should not be upset. Sometimes the reason, it's not known for us. We don't know about it. We get upset. We think this is deprivation. God is depriving this family from children, depriving this father from being a father, depriving this man from being a father, depriving this mother or this lady, this wife from being a mother. But there is a reason. He says in Surah Ashura, لِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Everything in this universe belongs to him. He is the owner. لِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ He creates what he likes, what he thinks is worthy. يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورِ He begins with females. In a society, the Arab society of Mecca, where they had no respect for females, here God begins by mentioning females before mentioning males. Yahabu, he bestows for whom he likes only females. Some other families he gives, he bestows on them only males. Do you see some families? They have three males, five, six, seven sons. No female. And sometimes other families, they had three, five, nine. I know some family who had 12, 12 daughters. No single son. This is God's choice. يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورُ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَأُنَاثًا And listen to the most important part. وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا And he makes... Whoever he wants, barren. Barren means without children. 
he bestows neither males nor females on them neither sons nor daughters there is a reason also what is the reason we really don't know we do not know because God's one of God's characteristics is far-sightedness God looks at the end of the road at the end of the journey we don't see the end of the journey we saw we see only a few meters ahead of us we don't know which what is good for us sometimes we think boys are good for us they turn to be disaster for the family sometimes we try to avoid females not knowing that a female a daughter could be a source of strength and assistance and affection to her family we don't know we don't know what God has saved for us so we have to be thankful if God gives you children you have to be thankful you have to be responsible and committed to your children and he, if he decides not to give you also of course you have to try today with modern science you can get help but if let's say for some reason you tried and it didn't happen again be thankful to God there is a reason there is a reason for that fatherhood is commitment my friends and we have to put our children if you are a father today inshallah many of those who are sitting in front of me they're going to be fathers soon inshallah in this life we 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 live in this uh, in the age of speed believe me when i came to irvine 20 years ago 21 years ago some of those kids were still in in their mother's wombs they were not born now i see them alhamdulillah they bring me their kids today they show me their kids you know so alhamdulillah one good thing about america that we move forward our children they grow faster and inshallah they get married sooner inshallah a big responsibility is to take care of your children is to raise them is to commit yourself to put your family as a priority i don't only mean to be a breadwinner to bring money or food home to bring values to and teachings you are not just a breadwinner some people think my responsibility as a father just to go and work hard so i can help my family financially of course this is one of his duties but this is not the only one i think the bigger duty of a father is to be a role model an example a teacher murshid murshid means giving direction a source of inspiration a source of strength in the family when the family feel weakness when the family are distraught when the family is confused they come to the father he's the pillar of power and strength and enthusiasm the father should be strong when one of the sons one of the daughters they have problem in their life they must rush to the father because he's not just a father he's a friend he's a consultant he's a senior aide senior advisor this is the real father real father is not just the one who just work and brings money the real father is the one who inspires his family ethically and inspires them he gives direction to his family he's a source of encouragement when a member of family when a member of, a, of the family feels weak confused depressed the father is there to save him or her to induce them with inspiration this is the job of the fathers my friends I want the, the new generation to hear what I'm saying to listen to it so you know that when you get married it's not just working it's not just your paycheck and you have to buy them clothing and food and take them to you know Disneyland and these places you have to be a teacher you have to be an educator this is your role 
This is the role of a responsible and committed and successful father. Not only the family, they need his wallet. Not only they need the wallet of the father, they need his wisdom too. His wisdom. Father's wisdom sometimes is more important than his money. Money, some of our children today, they can make money at the age of 16. Minimum wage. They don't die of starvation. But nobody can provide them with wisdom. The wisdom, they find it with their fathers at home. And if you think your dad is not like that, if you think your dad, he failed in his moral responsibility, he wasn't a good father, he wasn't an example, he wasn't a source of inspiration, he wasn't a source of encouragement, he never talked to you, he never gave you direction, he never shared good time with you, then you have to be like that. You learn a lesson from your dad. Say, whatever I experienced with my dad was not good. I didn't have good experience with him. May God forgive him for what he did. But I'm going to be a different father. I learn lessons from other people's mistakes. I learn a lesson. I try to avoid them. I try to, if you think your father, some people, they come to me. They said, my dad didn't do anything. Whatever I am, it's because of me. Okay. Although I don't believe you, because at least your father brought you into this life. Your father brought you to America. Otherwise, you would have been in the jungles of one of these countries. You know. Your father was the one who brought you to this country. Your father gave you, you know, sent you to school, gave you food. Although we, we tend to deny and forget the blessings and the favors of our parents. But suppose your father didn't do anything. And your father was mistaken and your father failed you here and there you should not do these mistakes and repeat them with your children tomorrow try to learn try to learn from the deficiencies of your parents so-called deficiencies now what is the right of the father sister Samana read a passage from Risalatul Hukuk, the Treaties of Rights, one of the most magnificent, one of the most powerful source of inspiration. Risalatul Hukuk lil Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al Abidin alayhi salatu was salam. 50 rights. He puts 50 rights in his this thesis, and one of them is. The right of your father is such and such and such. And it is mentioned only in the Quran. How do we respect our fathers? It's mentioned here, chapter 17, Surah Al Isra. God uses a beautiful term. God says, I have decreed, your Lord has decreed. Qadha, meaning more than recommendation. It's not just recommendation. It's an obligation. Sometimes God says, I'd love for you to do this and that. Recommendation. But sometimes, waqadha, it's a must. You must do this. That's the only way of success. Waqadha rabbuk, Ali. Waqadha rabbuk. What did he decree? Waqadha rabbuk. Allah ta'budu illa iyah, that you worship none but him and immediately he turned from him to your parents, to your father and your mother. Wabilwalidaini ihsana. Be virtuous to parent, to your parents. Ihsana, virtuous. Wabilwalidaini ihsana. And then he tells you how to respect them. Look at these beautiful steps because we sometimes we get confused. What is respect? Respect is a broad term. What is it? Send them money. This is respect. Saying salam to them. And how are you, my daddy? I love you. Kissing them on the cheek. You know, is that the only thing we have to do? Greeting them in the morning. Say, hey, I have to go to work. Daddy, hello. 
And then coming back from work, hi daddy, I'm tired, you know. Or there is something more into it. Definitely there is something more into it. Look at what God says. God gives us a good lesson, good direction, good decree. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Being virtuous to your parents, إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا Once, إِمَّا means once. Once they attain an old age, either one of them or both, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ Never say a word of. Of, it means the least expression of contempt the least expression of irritation and annoyance when someone is today though let's say the weather is not very good you say oof your space is not very comfortable you say oof the food that your mother cooks for you every day and puts on the table you don't like it your majesty today the food you say oof okay oof is the least expression of unhappiness or discomfort the least least i know some of them they don't use the least they they use the strongest they bang their hand on the on the table boom i don't like this food or sometimes they break the plate because they don't like the food allah says do not say even the least expression of contempt do not say it فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ any expression of complaint or annoyance or sometimes irritation. And some of the Mufassireen say, some of the commentators on the Quran, they say this, this word, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ It's a reference to a specific situation. What is it? They say when sometimes your parents attain old age, you have to take them for their personal hygiene you know take them to the bathroom help them hold their hand to walk with them they are in the hospital at home you know they are sick and some people get irritated ah, I don't like this this is ugly this is you know gross never say this to them often this is number one God gives five steps how to respect our parents our fathers and our mothers Step number one, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Nor chide them or rebuff them. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Do not speak ugly or harshly with your parents. Many of us, many of us who are children, who are sons and daughters, at the time of anger, we disrespect our parents. We say bad terms to them. We, we speak profanity. We use words that we should never use with any person, let alone your father or your mother. We have to be respectful to them. Even you think your dad did something wrong, you are not allowed to tell your dad you are stupid. You are not allowed to use this with your dad, neither with your mom. Even if you think they are mistaken. Even if you think they did injustice to you. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Never chide or rebuff your parents. Never use dismissive expressions against your parents. Never ever. There are other ways. If you disagree with your dad, there is another way of telling him, I disagree with you. Be polite. Be polite. You don't have to agree with your parents. Who said you have to agree all the times with your parents on all issues? No. You may disagree, but the disagreement has to be very polite. God has given us intelligence. We have a huge vocabulary we can use. You can use. There are many synonymous. Rather than saying stupid, say daddy, Maybe, maybe there is something wrong with this idea that you are telling me. That's okay. You may say this to him. But never use, never chide. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Never repel your parents. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا And then number three, 
Instead of repelling them, وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Speak to them, address them with an honorable, honorable speech, honorable word, noble word, قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Always speak to them. Spoil your parents. Use the best in your vocabulary, the best terms of respect, use them with your parents. I know some people, they use the best terms of respect with their girlfriends and boyfriends, but they don't use them with their mothers and fathers. When it comes to his girlfriend, she is the sweetest on earth. He is too afraid of saying something, so she runs away from him. But when it comes to his dad, his dad is an easy target. His mother is an easy target. Why? Because they say, my dad, he's stuck with me. He has to pay me. He has the only, I am the only son. Or I am, even if he's not the only son. This is his responsibility to sustain me, to pay for me. See? This is not right. This is not right. Because you're going to see the result of all these actions in your life. Before you die. If you do good to your parents, you will see it. If you do evil, you will see it too. Definitely you will see it. There is no escape from that. The way you treat your parents, your children are going to treat you tomorrow. I've seen in my life, siblings belong to one family. Siblings. From the same father, same mother, same house, same family. One of them is dutiful to his parents, the other is any dutiful or less caring. I would not say undutiful, but less caring. And I have seen the result of both in their life. Someone who's, who is more caring, more compassionate, more affectionate with his parents, I see the success in his life. And I see the failure in the other one's life. You will see it, definitely. Be careful of how you treat your parents, how you speak to them. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Always speak to them in good terms. Always respect them, even if we disagree with them. I know when we love them, when they give us money, definitely you say, Daddy, I love you. But not only when they give you money. Suppose they don't have money. That's it, he's not a father anymore. She's not a mother anymore. How about when they raised you when you were a baby and you, you knew nothing about this world? You knew nothing. And they changed your diaper, they took care of you, they fed you, they put their life in jeopardy because of you. Because of you and your happiness and your comfort. Be dutiful to your parents. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And then number four. وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Look at this beautiful expression, beautiful proverb and parable. Lower for them out of a humility, lower for them the wings of a humility out of mercy. Meaning you have to be very humble before your parents. Very humble before your mother, before your father. I know some kids, they treat their mothers like slaves. Believe me, the way a master, an owner, treats his or her slaves. The way they talk to them, the way they give them orders. You must do this for me. Or if they come home and that thing is not ready, they go mad and they start insulting and cursing their parents. You are not going to be a good mother if you do this with your mother. You are not going to be a good father if you treat your parents in this miserable way. Believe me, you fail. You lose your family. You lose your future. You lose your happiness. Even if you are rich, even if you think that you don't need your parents, you are rich. This is wrong. You need to respect them. وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Lower for them the wings of humility. Humility. Dhul. See? 
God says, I don't want you to, to disrespect yourself. I don't want any person to humiliate himself or herself except before their parents. The only people that you must humiliate yourself before them, your parents, your father and your mother. Don't do that before any person. Don't do that to your girlfriend. Don't do that to your boyfriend, to your husband, to your wife. Never humiliate yourself before your partner, before your friend, before your boss. But your mother, your father, they deserve it. They deserve it. And that has nothing to do with religion. Sometimes some, a person is religious, but he's dis disrespectful to his parents. He loses all his credits. He's not religious. This is what God says. God says, if you do the work of all the prophets, all the virtuous acts, you perform them, and you come to me on the day of judgment, you are disrespectful to your parents. You lose all your credits. You have no credits with me. Don't tell me that I spend the nights of Ramadan in adoration and worship and I have a credit with God. If you don't respect your parents, you have no credit. You have no credit. And if someone, if someone is a disbeliever in God, he doesn't believe in God, but he or she is dutiful to his parents, God will bring him success. God will still bring him success. Because this has nothing to do with being religious or irreligious, disreligious. has nothing to do with that. It has to do with parents having rights upon you. Why? Because they brought you into this life. They took care of you. They invested their energy, their life, their efforts, their concerns to bring you up, to protect you. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Always speak to them nicely. As Samana mentioned, I know some, we are close to each other. You know, parents are close to their children. But still you are not allowed to call your father by his first name. Or your mother by her first name. Sometimes I know the mother, she gets excited. They call her by her first name. But this is not an Islamic adab. I don't know about other cultures. Maybe it works in other cultures. But the, in the Islamic culture, it does not work. Of course, neither you have to tell him your majesty, your honor, your no. You don't have to, you know. Baba is a good, good term. When the Quran came asking the, the Muslims not to call the Prophet Ya Muhammad, the following morning, all the Muslims, they started calling him Ya Rasulallah, except his daughter Fatima. His daughter Fatima also, she called him Ya Rasulallah, but the Prophet came to her. He said to her, Ya, ya Fatima, you are an exception. Do not call me Ya Rasulallah. Call me Ya Aba, O oh Daddy. Because I'd love to hear this from you. I'd love to hear my daughter calling me Daddy. I'm a father, and I'd love for my children to call me daddy. So all the Muslims, including Imam Ali salam, they had to address the Prophet, Ya Rasulallah. One exception, one exception that was Fatima to Zahra, she would call him Ya Aba. The Prophet said, Ahabbu li qalbi. I really enjoy when I hear it from your mouth. You call me daddy. We have to respect when we address them, we must respect them. Address them in good term. One of the Islamic adab is when your father comes into the room, you stand for him. You stand. But what we do today, we watch television. We are busy with television, with the games. My, the father comes 50 times and goes out and we never pay attention to him. And the mother has to bring us the food like a servant. She puts the breakfast in front of us, the lunch, dinner, drinks this she cleans after us you know she comes into our room the room is a mess and we have a servant in the house the servant her name is mother we treat them like servants this is not good this is this type of islam is invalid this type of islam is barbaric it's not civilized it's more important 
to bring your dad a cup of water than doing two rak'ah of salat. Do you know? If your dad, you know he's thirsty, you bring him some water, it is more rewarding and it has more thawab than standing and doing salat or reciting Quran. This is what religion tells us and teaches us. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Out of affection and humility, lower for them the wings of humility out of mercy. And then, last thing, وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Always pray for your parents. Why? When we pray, when we pray for someone, it means we love that person. Especially when you pray privately. In tahajjud, salatul layl, and when that person is not there, but you remember him or her, it means you love them. And the first people that you must love are your parents. So you have to pray for them during their lifetime and after their departure. Always. وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا Say, my Lord, bestow mercy on them. كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا As they bestowed their mercy on me when I was a child. They raised me. They had love for me. They had care for me. وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا There is a hadith of the Prophet. I, would, I must mention this hadith before I conclude. The Prophet ﷺ says, يقال للعائق يقال للعاق it would be said by God to someone who's disrespectful to his parents عاق it's the the opposite of بر بر الوالدين عقوق الوالدين بر الوالدين is to be virtuous and kind and dutiful عقوق الوالدين is when you are undutiful disrespectful God will say to one who is disrespectful to his parents, يُقَالُ لِعَاقِ الْوَالِدَيْنِ اِعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنِّي لَا أَخْفِرُ لَكَ Whatever worship you want to do, do, it's not going to help you. I'm not going to forgive you. God who is very forgiving, God who is very merciful, He says to the person who is vicious with his parents, disrespectful. He says to him, I'm not going to forgive you. Whatever you do of prayers, unless you go to your mother and you're to your dad and tell them, I'm sorry, and you change your behavior. You behave in front of your parents, you behave. You respect them. This is the key for success. If you go to the college, the college teaches you key for success is money, is education, money. That's it. But when you come to the masjid, the masjid says education plus akhlaq. Plus manners, plus being dutiful, dutiful to your parents and to your family members. Allahumma khfir lil mu'minin wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat al ahiyah minhum wal amwat tabi Allahumma bainana wa bainhum bil khayrat. Allahumma minna ala marzana bil shifa wal afiyah wa ajil fi faraj sayyidina wa maulana sahib al asr wal zaman. وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد